they're really doing this? She's throwing it to Michelle. Michelle catches the flowers. You get married next. Your life's all set. I grew up wondering if I would be able to stand in front of someone and promise her the rest of my life. But here we are. It was a reflex action. It was the most awful moment in the whole history of women being stuck with you idiots. You've got one day to tell me we're on the road to somewhere. I'm naked under this. What are we doing here? I'm underdressed. I could be asking the same questions at home with my wife. You walk out that door, I'm gonna figure out how to kill you and get away with it. I really can't do this if there's a ring on my finger. That's how it's done? Those are professionals. The symbol of our love. This ring means commitment. Where the hell's a ring? Yeah. Mom. Honey. Michelle wants to marry me. She wants me to be happy with her in the future. I think that sounds romantic. <laughs> I think it's science fiction. So why haven't we met these people? Our kid sleeps with their kid. Doesn't that entitle us to a dinner? My parents want to have you guys over. Absolutely not. Why don't you want to meet these people? What could we possibly have in common? Hi. Mother? Yeah. It is so nice to finally meet oh. you. Well, thank you. Yeah. Dad? He's outside? Huh? Sorry, I'm a little late. <laughs> hey. You can't kill me now. I got company. Guess what? what? I'm the company. That's my son, Alan, who's with your wife holding your daughter. Would anyone care for a drink? Oh, yes! yes! What about the day that we don't remember we gave each other the best parts of our lives? We did this to them? Mostly you. Are you in love with my wife? No! Damn it. How do I know if I love her? You would ask yourself the only question that matters. Does this girl carry within her the potential to suck out your soul like a Nosferatu? No. Then go forward, my son. Ladies and gentlemen, the boys and girls, children of all ages, I am joined here today by a ridiculously talented writer, director, Mr. Michael Jacobs. Everybody say hello, Michael. Say hello to everybody. Hi, everybody. Michael, we're here talking about your brand new film, Maybe I Do, uh, and you have a ridiculously talented cast here, Diane Keaton, Richard Gere, Susan Sarandon, Emma Roberts, Luke Bracey, and... William H. Macy, how do you get a talented cast like this together, or is that just you pulling your swag card on everybody? Oh, no, I have no swag card. This was complete luck. We, we, uh, I, I wrote this as a play uh, when I was 19 years old. It ran uh, on Broadway when I was 22 for a short time and had a great successful run in stock and regional and internationally. And uh, then I had a television career for, for a long time, and when I finished my last series, I uh, looked at my wife and said, okay, what, what do I do now? And she said, uh, I don't know. You got anything in the drawer? And I literally went to the drawer and opened it up. And uh, I found my old play. And I read it. And I thought, boy, this is terrible. This is from the point of view of a kid who knew nothing and and then lived a life i wonder what would happen if i rewrote this and i rewrote it and uh it it uh i, I mounted it uh for production like i loved what it looked like and so i wrote it as a screenplay and i handed it in and i got a call from a guy named chris slager uh at endeavor content which is fifth season now and he said i love this what do you think of diane keaton and it was, uh, you know, you, you can't, you can't process that. I love this. What do you think of Diane Keaton? Uh, yeah, that, that, that'd be great. And the next thing I know, I'm, I'm sitting opposite Diane and she says, who do you want to get for Monica? Cause it's a tough role. And I said, yeah, I was thinking about Susan Sarandon. And she said, you better get her cause she's the only one who could do it. And one thing led to the next Susan and I had a, a wonderful breakfast uh, and, and, um, you know, she, she signed on and then Bill Macy read it and he gave us his answer and really quickly. And, um, then Richard turned it down and, and I wrote him a letter 
And I guess the, there was something in the letter because he said, I'm going to call you. And he called. And we talked for about 90 minutes and just hit it off over the phone, just laughing. And, and it was one of those phone calls with all the right rhythms. And he just felt like a buddy I had grown up with. And he said, I'm going to do it. So the the uh, producer, uh, uh, Vincent Newman, um, said, what do you think of Emma? I love Emma. Will she do it? And Vince sent the script to her. She he, he had worked with Emma previously. And Emma read it. And that next morning, I heard from Emma, said, I want to do this. It's all... This resonates with with me because it's all we talk about, and and it's honest, and I love what's between the lines here, and and uh, let's go, and and the last role cast uh, after we had Emma, who's going to play opposite Emma, and Vince once again thought of Luke because they were just so wonderful in Holiday. And Luke, you know, listen, you hear about the rest of that cast. It was an easy yes for Luke, but he really liked the script and he was really good in the role. And we had a, a lot of fun together. It was it was just, you know, one of those projects where each card fell together beautifully. And here we are. I, I love this story. This is just it's one of those stories where the layers just kept getting better and better. And. You mentioned slightly that you had like just a, you know, 20 years small career in television where you made some of the best sitcoms of all time. So thank you for that, Michael. Well, thanks for saying that, but okay. I mean, you, that my whole childhood is in there. Dinosaurs, you know, uh, Boy Meets World, uh, Charles in Charge, it's all there. You, 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 your writing has always been your strong suit for you. So for you to say you rewrote an old script and made it better, in your opinion, means it probably was already really good since it ran on Broadway. I unfortunately never got to see that because I'm a young, I'm kind of a younger fella. And Broadway didn't interest me till I became a little bit older. But just hearing the absolute insanity of, of how, how you got this cast together, I wanted to ask you, when you were reevaluating the script, and you were taking a re- evaluation of your what's important to you in your life now and you're rewriting it what were those things that were paramount to you getting this right or more right well my my feeling is that when you're a kid you know i love you is a very easy thing to come out of your mouth um it's a device uh you you, you want to say it because it makes you feel good too but i think when you're young it, it, it might be more for your benefit than it is for someone that you actually love. Um, love didn't come to me uh, uh, in any grand gesture or any sweeping wave. It was, I don't know, 20 years into my marriage with my wife, who I thought I loved. I thought I loved her from the day I met her. But I'm watching her one night, um, and we wake up. She's sleeping. And, and I wake up and I, I look at her and I realize, first of all, she's still there. And second of all, she she is the person I want to still be there. And love is a quiet realization that I'm going to be buried next to this person. And we've we've had a life together. And I couldn't think that way at 19 years old. It's not a, a process that you have because you don't have the life experience. And so, you know, I could write the, the, the kid's hopefulness, but what I couldn't write was the adult's gravity. And, and so I think the rewrite is, is, uh, uh, has much more weight to it. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm taking some pretty hard hits in some of the early reviews. Um, because a lot of it is a rom-com that is not romantic and not comedy. And that's right. It's not a romantic comedy. It really is a, a, an observation about the trajectory of, of hope in a long relationship that you still will love this person you are with. Um, and it will sustain because marriage is the most precious commodity, you know, the, the, the most important decision you make. 
these are where your children come from. This is where the influence on your children comes from, which is what the movie's about. And and you know, to 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 think you can understand something like this, you know, as a young person is ridiculous. And so it was a joy for me to rewrite it, but I never rewrote it. I I can't help having comic moments in in anything. I I try to find, you know, what is comic about. Um, you know, a character or a situation or or a conflict that arises, but I I think that it is subsidiary to the gravity of of do we stay together? Do we not stay together? Why stay together at all? One of the early thoughts for the poster of this movie was you know the four adults staring right into the camera. Uh, we have completely screwed up our lives and it's the most normal thing in the world to have these screwed up lives and the two kids in front of them emma and luke just looking at the camera with hope you know it was a little on the nose and 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 i think what we what we ended up going with was this beautiful poster where the kids are in the center and they are surrounded by their parents uh, and they cannot break out of that surrounding, and that too is what the movie is. But these are the images; these are these are the things that go through my mind as to what the movie is, um, which I hope is is uh, I I do not perceive that it's romantic comedy, but I do perceive that it's really interesting. Well, I love I actually loved how unromantic it was it really struck a chord with me in the right way because i'm a huge romantic comedy guy i i it's one of my it's my favorite genre i love you know love in movies and you're right by the way about luke bracy and uh, emma roberts they were great in holiday love love that and that chemistry obviously permeates in your film um but i love what you mentioned how you wanted it to just be more of a realization because i feel like oftentimes with romantic comedies, the expectation is for it to be grandiose or over the top. And and here it's just there. It exists. And I, I love the honesty of that. And so I got to tell you, Michael, I was very, very taken aback by the honesty of, of the, both the script and the performances because they're very down to earth. And I think that that is suggestive of, of you as a director and your uh, your vision of what you wanted being taken seriously by by yourself and, and your crew and, and everybody that you were working with there was that something that like i said when you went in you were like no nah, we're just gonna we're just gonna cut this as you know close to the teeth as possible is that your broadway background coming to, to fruition or is that more of a you trying to make sure that you're honest with your approach there well it it was um here's to answer your question here's exactly what happened um, I felt uh, there are there are rhythms to comedy, um, and they're they're sometimes artificial. Um, you know, you 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 set up joke, you set up punchline, so there's a certain music, and you hear that music, and and you know, some of our greatest comedians were musicians, and they heard the music too. Um, in this, um, I fought that uh, because uh, and 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 um, Bill Macy, who who came a couple of days early, and I got to sit with Bill, and we just talked about all the aspects of the script. the 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 realization that I had is that these actors on this set. I mean, I, all I needed to do was get out of the way. Their their delivery of the lines and the way they interacted with each other was honest. And what the film doesn't have is the formula music to the delivery of the lines. And I think that's why you feel the way you feel. It it it's a more honest rendering because it falls out of of a romantic comedy trope um and my my 
favorite films in the world. I mean, you know, some of them uh, are romantic comedies. I'm, my, my wife, uh, whenever Pretty Woman is on the air, it doesn't matter. Four in the morning, two in the afternoon. Um, we're watching Pretty Woman. And um, Richard and I <laughs> laughed about this. Um, for my, I was at Disney for a long time, and for my wife's anniversary, um, was it the tenth? I can't, I can't remember which one it was. Um, I called Jeffrey Katzenberg, who is one of the great executives of all time, and I asked him if I could borrow Julia Roberts' dress, um, and I got this box delivered to me with a bow on it and a card from Jeffrey that said "Happy Anniversary." And Patty got to wear Julia's dress and she <laughs> flipped out. And and then you come full circle and you're working with Richard. And Patty, you know, came to the set and got to meet Richard. It was it, just these glorious moments and these honest moments of, of, of how important movies are in all of our lives. And, you know, the opportunity to, 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 to make something like this with these people. Um, you do, you don't want it to be what you've done. You want the, it to, to live in its own device and, and live honestly. And, and I think that, you know, it was a very organic shoot because Susan's a force of nature and, and what she did with this role, which in the hands of somebody else, it, it's easy for Monica to be, you know, Cruella de Vil. And and uh, what what Susan did was, you know, that she was a, a woman who was just simply unfulfilled and disappointment uh, uh, was permeating this character because she just simply wasn't getting what she thought not only she deserved, but what she aspired to. And she didn't receive it. What what happened was she married the most decent, lovely guy in the world and, you know, felt cursed by that. And and and. Bill, of course, and tells us, you know, his regret is that he didn't marry the woman that he always felt he was supposed to. And these are certainly tools in the kit to make you feel for the characters. But they're also honest stories that I know of life. Uh, um, but I didn't know them when I was 19. But I know them now. How how people feel what what their regrets are um and i also know that um there there are friends of mine that are are married successfully and there are friends of mine that are divorced and the ones who are divorced we've had these conversations about the decision to divorce the divorce itself and what happens after the divorce and i didn't take lightly at all the fact that um bill and susan were not going to end up together but I didn't want it to be this crashing I just the fact that she softly kisses him at the wedding and exits. That's it. And and what I talked about with Emma was, you know, she didn't want I didn't want Luke didn't want we don't want the obligatory um romantic comedy scenes where, oh, here's how they love each other and this is you know, here we are on the Ferris wheel. And 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 we we assume that the audience understands that the jumping off point here is they have had those scenes, but the scene they're now going to have is that there's a grand gesture that shows that this fellow is reticent about any perceived future that Emma is thinking about. And the mystery is why? Why does a person say, how do you marry somebody you love? Where does that come from? And then we find out where it comes from. And this is not romantic comedy. This is sort of romantic tragedy. And and the the the, the feeling at the end is, and could easily be, um, this is not a specific relationship. This could be anybody, and that's what I'm going for that it's all of us, that Richard's character and Bill's character, that, 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 there's, that there's a man who stumbles into a, a clandestine affair because he says, 
what do I have left? 20 years? Uh, I remember 20 years ago, like it was last Tuesday. That's what I've got from last Tuesday to now. I better do something. And he, what he does is the greatest mistake of his life. And, and Bill, who teaches his son that because he did not do something, lost the, the woman he should have ended up with. Um, Diane's exhibition of, of loyalty and, and, and um, belief in what love and marriage is gets put to a test in this movie where there's a simple facial expression she gives to Emma when Emma asks her, do you still believe what you taught me? That is heartbreaking, pathetic, and one of the funnier moments in the film. And so the, the, coupled with, with, with the kid's hope for what can be and the adult's realization of the gravity forces that happen, it's a, it's a, a movie, I think, that, that hopefully the audience finds honest and can hopefully re relate to the personality aspects exhibited by all of these characters. I love that answer. That that was a spectacular answer, Michael. If uh, if people want to check out your movie, why should they? Because I know it comes out today in theaters. Uh, why should they check this movie out? Well, first of all, um, the the older you are, the more you're going to like this film. Um, I I think that the 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 um, the demographic. Let's break it down. I want to break down your question. Um, people that are over 45 years old, over 40 years old, should check this movie out because they will recognize exactly what is currently happening in their lives. And it's my fondest hope that, you know, um, couples go see the movie and they hold hands and smile at each other because of the recognition of what is in front of them that they've lived. Um, if you're younger, it's you get to see some of the greatest actors who have ever done it. And when you go home and look at your parents, they had lives too. Um, plus, of course, you get Emma and Luke, and you get to, you know, let what they're going through resonate with what you're currently going through. So I, I think that it's a, it's a bimodal picture. And the reason you should see it is because I will think you will come out a little bit changed and a little bit uh, uh, more understanding that marriage is the most important decision we make and the most precious commodity we have. And to make it work, it takes some effort. I love that because you. I think you're. I think you're right about that. I think the perspective on the film is dependent on how much life you've led. Because I, I like the film, and I really enjoyed kind of seeing everything from that perspective, that lens that you're talking about of a lived-in life or mistakes made. And I, I just, I really enjoyed what you did here, Michael. And. I guess I guess I'm a fan of your work because I look when I was looking through everything I was like I love all this stuff that he's done since the you know time immemorial that I've been alive. So thank you for. Well, even, thank you. It's know. a very sweet. <laughs> You're welcome. It's it's very sweet of you to say. And you know the the good news is, um, I I talk to writers and I get why do we do this? We what are we doing? I mean it's painful, you know. And and the answer is is we all are simply trying to communicate good ideas to an audience. And if, if we reach people, then everything is worthwhile. And, and that you've said what you've said is what makes it worthwhile for me. I love that. And honestly, guys, check out Maybe I Do. It comes out in theaters today, January 27th. I, thank you so much for even giving me part of your day, Michael. I know you're a busy guy and you're probably working on two or three other things while you're you know, talking to me, but I appreciate the time to talk about your film and you seem really proud of it and you should be. Uh, you're welcome. And it was great talking to you. Be well. Oh yeah. You have a wonderful day. Thanks you too. Bye.